Yeah. It's December 13th. We're here at 100 Main Street in Thompson for the Historic District Commission meeting. Um, let's call the roll. Peter Davison, chair, is here. Peter Davison. Oh, sorry. I mean, it was your <laughs> oh, Dom Dominic Cadella. Present. Wayne Davis. John Graham. Here. Andrew Munsey. Present. Uh, Mr. Davis is absent. Mr. Davis. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, all right. The first item on the agenda, as Gary is very smart, is no longer with the board, is the election of a new chair for the board. Do we have any nominations? I make a motion to elect Peter Davison to the chair of the board. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. All right. All in favor? The motion passes. And now the chair of the board. Who seconded it? I, mean, well, I did. Thank you. Sorry. We should probably elect yeah. a vice chair too, since you were the vice chair. Oh, that's right. All right. <laughs> so now we have to have a discussion. Do you want John to be the vice chair of the board? I don't mind. I nominate John to be the vice chair of the board. I'll second that as well. Did you get that? I do. All in favor, say aye. Aye. John is now the vice chair of the board. All right. So have you had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? I have a motion to approve the minutes as written of the September 27th, 2023 meeting. Oh, anyone want to second? second? I'll second. <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> All in favor? All right. Our, our next item on the agenda is a certificate of appropriateness application tag map U06 lot 59, adding rooftop solar panels to the structure to melt your place. Okay, what? Mr. Made Davis, has Mr. Made Davis has made it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, station. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. That's the most thing we've ever had. All right, so who will be speaking on behalf of the project? I mean, I, if you want to hear the rationale or I'll go on up to the podium and give us a brief overview of the project. <laughs> thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you. I am Tad Brenville. Um, my wife and I moved to to Melton Place approximately a year and a half ago. So somewhat new faces. Um, as you're probably all aware, energy prices are up. It's expensive to eat these days. Um, and it's a large, it's a large space to heat. Uh, and we fear um, the first pipes and whatnot because we can't zone the, the uh, structure. Um, along those lines, we also are trying to be environmentally conscientious, look at alternative um, energy sources and we feel that solar right now is the best short-term prospect to meet the needs of the property um, that being said we have had an assessment which this gentleman can speak to but basically the plan will be to put solar panels on the middle portion of the l um, front to back as much as we can to obviously capture as much as we can and so doing, we'll have the roof redone and, and have it done in such a way that um, if we get all black panels on an all black roof, it shouldn't be very obtrusive, not to mention the house is set back from the road. So as long as there's no profile, it's not going to be very obvious. And in our opinion, will not significantly change the character of the house. It will, however, um, allow us to do more things with the house regarding updating, heating, um, and as well as diverting finances into maintenance of the original character, which is what we are truly interested in doing, versus heating it and letting, it, letting sections fall into disrepair because the, the, uh, the cost of it. So that's, that is the rationale. That's the whole reason. Okay. Any questions for me? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned all black panels, but I think the proposal calls for silver like panels with the I, you can see that I believe there's options. 
There's yeah, options we, in the College of the Pan. Um, for full disclosure, um, obviously, um, cost and efficiency will factor into it again. You don't want to spend a lot of money on something that is only 50% as efficient as something else based solely upon the color. Um, but the plants do it in such a way, again, that it doesn't, that it, it blends in with the structure as it currently is. It is not um, an eyesore. <laughs> Um, has there been um, any kind of evaluation on alternative locations for the panels using separate structures that are in the backyard or freestanding ground mounted away? Again, this gentleman can speak to it probably better than I can, but the main problem we have is the amount of trees on the property and the direction of the sun. There, ha there has been an analysis to look at what is by far, what makes the most sense, both you know investing in this and making sure it actually functions mm -hmm. as well as where it's gonna capture maximum sunlight. Um, and it is the middle. Putting it at ground level, there's too much shade. Our other option would be literally the level of trees, which mm -hmm. um, I think we would all agree it is not desirable. It's an option, but again, I think it, it kind of, it, it defeats the purpose, number one, I think it would truly make the house an eyesore, uh, clearing all the land you know, to put panels, you know, somewhere unobtrusive, so that they had direct access to sunlight. So, unfortunately, um, from a from a planning perspective, that is, I think, the best place. Was that your assessment, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you said it very well. Um, it is there, it's a really, really forested lot. So we could. Could, could we have you come up and just yeah, so yeah. she can have it for the minutes? So it's nice about rooftop solar. Could you have your name? Oh, Absolutely. Sorry. Uh, my name is Stefan Depka. I'm here on behalf of Rachel Jordan. Uh, I work for Maine Solar Solutions and I perform the, the site assessment at two metric uh, Thank you. So that was nice about rooftop solar is. Right, you're using the existing structure. There's no need to, uh, like uh, we heard earlier, there's no need to clear additional trees, make more space on the property. Um, and then, right, the elevation makes a really big difference for the sun access to the panels. Um, so it is really the rooftop is the place to be. And we looked at, right, a number of different sides of the building. It's right, the structure is large, it's grown over the years, it's a lot of different roof space. The areas we've identified are going to be the most productive, right? That have the best sun access, which means we can get away with the smallest, the fewest number of panels, uh, so less visual obstruction or change to the property. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I just want to clarify this is on the corner of Belcher and Maine. Is that right? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I can tell from I know where it is by looking at the photograph on the the historic building structure survey form. I didn't recognize it from the aerial view because it has a blue roof. And that threw me off because it doesn't look like it has a blue roof now. So part of the structure, I think yes, it does. The oh blue, it does blue standing sea yeah. metal roof. It that's is still the like primary, yeah, yeah, the primary oh, the primary that's the blue metal. But, oh, I didn't realize that. Can you pull their photo there? Yeah, because the photo that I'm looking at here looks like it's a it's a gray shingle roof. This is a the main house. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually took these photos today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the view from Melcher Place. This is the view from Melcher Place. Yeah. This okay. is this is the view from the corner of okay. like the southern corner of Maine and Melcher. Uh, and then this is this area, this area. Yeah. And I'm not verified by the British. Nothing patients. Sorry. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This photo is this roughly the scale and the size of what they look like? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other questions? Uh, I have just one more follow up. So, if I can show you, there's a, I have a photo of the side of the property. Um, so, this is off to the 
the eastern side of the property uh, as it's sited. And I was curious about, again, going back to the ground mounted solar array option. So it doesn't appear to be uh, very many trees. Well, I don't think I have a picture so much of that side, but uh, just curious about was there a full assessment for ground mounted array in like, this area? There doesn't appear to be many obstructions there. And my primary concern is. So this is a large prominent structure. Mm -hmm. And so this would, I feel we might be setting a precedent for better or worse. I'll go by saying, I think um, embracing solar, I think is a great, great thing, but we are, we'll, we'll be setting a precedent. This is the first time that we've had an application for solar mounted array for the historic problem. I, I think we should probably close and yep. go into deliberation. Yep. Find the questions we can discuss that. Yeah, but I can we answer his question? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So the rationale behind it is they actually do a, tra a seasonal tracking of the line of the sun. Um, without getting into the, the, the physics and the mathematics, unless you were then direct line of the, the actual pathway of the sun through the seasons, you're getting significant diminution in efficiency based upon the sine or cosine the angle of the sun hitting the panel. So unless those panels are arrayed whereby you're getting the most direct sunlight, knowing it as an angle based upon the tilt of the earth, if you put it somewhere, even though there's no trees, if it's not in the direct pathway or in an adequate pathway of the sun, it won't capture anything. The, um, sorry, not to interrupt you. Uh, the area that I was uh, discussing is roughly parallel to the uh, proposed location that long L that connects the yeah. barn to the main house, a solar array to the east side of that barn would potentially still be the rays would still be in the same line. Again, you have to factor in the trees, and and that's why I was showing that there is. It doesn't appear to be very obviously it's winter, uh, so trees are are thinned out. But that's why I was asking the gentleman: has, yeah. has there been a an assessment for that site or? It was honestly, I didn't look at it in detail because I just I took a glance at that uh, in the property and it didn't look like it was going to make sense. So when we come off the roof down to the ground, the shadow from those trees extends much, much further. Um, I can I could run an analysis and get the numbers for it. Um, my sense is that it's going to be a much more less less productive area. And then the question becomes, can we produce the same amount of power in that footprint? Are there any anything running underground that could be impacted when we sink six foot ground screws, right? Adding to the property another permanent structure. Um, and then is there some loss of utility to the property uh, by putting the panels right there? Uh, so there's a lot of number of challenges that present itself. And uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there. And, okay. Just to be clear, you're talking about along Melcher Street in between that and the house? Um, yes, I think it would be yeah. facing Melcher Street. Melcher place capable of what you're talking about. So this is the barn structure. Yeah. If you're looking at that overhead shot, yeah. this would be to the right hand side or to the east. And so this so where the outside, yeah, that's like that you know, like either outside. in front or behind that fence line, potentially. Mm -hmm. and there is an apple orchard behind that fence line. So it's barely there are trees up to this. You'd have to be eliminating that. Yeah, that's that's why I was just asking. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay. Plus, I mean, there is actually more chip that's tree. This is all small trees okay. here. I don't know if you could, I guess you could cut it down. Yeah. Yeah. No, but then you raise the same problem. Yeah. The whole property would just cut more trees, trees down here. So, right. I mean, yeah. my opinion on this is so that, the question. Yeah, why don't we close and, okay. I have one more question before we close. Sure. Go um, so, I, I read in here somewhere that the panels will be six inches above the roof. Are they following the slope of the roof or are they angled in any other way or uh, uh, parallel to the parallel to the slope of the roof? Exactly. That's six right. inches. Okay. All right. All set. Everybody, everybody done with it. Okay. Question, question, closed. John? I mean, I think solar is inevitably coming down in our district. And personally, I would much rather see it mounted on roofs than becoming other structures and problems. Um, I think it is less obtrusive to see somewhat blended into a 
structure than it is to see a yard have a new structure as a solar panel. I also believe that when it is really anywhere, but when it's on a roof, it is not impacting the structure that a future owner could not remove it. And that is a lot of my concern in this is things that destruct and take away from the buildings that can't be changed back. Mm -hmm. Taking out windows is a big pet peeve of mine because it's really tough to find them and put in new windows and things like that. I think uh, which really defines and helps the character of our building. I don't see if done well. I mean, if they're, as, if they're all in different angles and moving all the time, that could definitely change the perspective. But I don't see by driving down that street that you're really going to notice. You're still going to see it's a big historical house. And having black, even with some silver trim, is not going to take away from, the, from so much of the um, neighborhood. And I think in the in the future for the whole district, it would be better to encourage solar on roofs mm -hmm. than than taking a driveway space that cutting trees down. And that is they could cut all the trees down on their property they wanted to. And the three huge trees on my property are gonna to continue to shade that whole yard. And I'm not cutting my trees down because I think that's valuable. And I think that nature, Melchior Street's really neat for full. Disclosure, I live on the other side of Mill Street. It's really neat because the power lines don't go down it. So the trees are big and overhang the road. And trying to cut those trees down to get solar in there, I think would diminish the neighborhood a lot more than the sense of the neighborhood and the historical feel of that stretch than putting solar panels on the roof that are somewhat limited. I don't think you're ever going to make it unless you do solar, you know. Like, Solar roof, which yeah. is not quite there yet. Yeah. And hopefully in the future we get to the point where we have solar roofs and we're approving yeah. solar roofs. And we don't know anything. But they're working on it. I know they are. Yeah. Okay. My house by roofs family. <laughs> Any other discussion? So I did notice that again, back to kind of my earlier question with you is where exactly the boundaries of the historic district lie. So there's a structure, it's 90 Main Street, it's just like two uh, buildings down the river, just on the other side. Uh, it's a new leaf dental office just down the street from us right now. Mm -hmm. It's right on the other side of Brilliant Motors. And that is a, um, there's a, a, it's an older structure. It appears to be an older structure and it's sided facing Main Street. And it has a large solar, you know, roof mounted solar array uh, right there. And then also, um, is more of a question for the, the commission itself, but I did notice that 6 Elm Street, which is the corner of Elm and Main, there is a garage there that has solar mounted on the roof. I don't believe they got permission for those, but mm -hmm. maybe you know. Yes, that does happen from time to time <laughs> where people come and ask for forgiveness later, if at all. So it's a much smaller yeah, it's much smaller than it sets back, or yes. It does it set back. Does it's back. not it's not prominent, it's yeah. not very noticeable, but it, yeah. it's there. So they should have came and asked. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. I think that roof mounted solar makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm only raising these questions as make sure that we're considering all options. Yep. Um, because I feel like we will be one, it, it is a prominent structure in the historic district. And two, um, <laughs> It would it would set a precedent, and I, I don't know. I, I've done some research into other communities. Bath is um, one of them, and I think uh, I can't remember the other. Um, but um, there's a couple communities, and they're all friendly. So I think, as John pointed out, it's going to come, and I think uh, it's a positive thing to give people options for energy independence and uh, overall better for the environment. Uh, but again, our job here is to make sure that we also preserve the character. So just raising those questions to make sure we consider everything. Does so anybody have questions for Trude? Okay. All right. Okay. We need to make a motion. Oh, we have to call it back. Well, what? We need to call oh, the meeting back to order. The meeting is back to order. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Um, are you ready for motion? I'm ready for motion. Um, I make a motion that the historical district commission approves the certificate of appropriateness for rooftop solar panel installation as outlined the applicant and is satisfied by 225-18B1A and 225-18B1 and 225-18B2A of the Thompson Zoning Ordinance for the following conditions. The condition review and approval refers to the final facts, frames, and materials submitted by the applicant or comments of the applicant, the representatives, review officials, and members of the public as reflected in the public record. Any change to the approval plans not called for in these conditions shall further shall require further review and approval in accordance with the Thompson Zoning Ordinance. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? The well, motion passes. You have a certificate of appropriateness. Thank you. We will help you with that at some point. All right. Is there any other business to be conducted? Anybody? All right. We have a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.